Hello, my name is Mike Abe, and welcome to my KSP campaign. Last episode, the big event happened. I finally was able to upgrade my vehicle assembly building and remove that 30 part limit. And uh, up until now, I've been fairly limited in what I've been launching, but uh, that 30 part limit, I think, will really help me start doing some things other than just putting small crafts into orbit and having Kerbals just farting around in the atmosphere. And uh, the reason why, of course, is because of unkerbled start. You know, I only have fairly small parts. Now, actually, there are other things that have been starting to unlock. And I think I'm going to start off with um, trying to build the best booster that I can to lift things into orbit. Let's see how much payload I can get into orbit. Now, one thing at the very end of last episode. I've been calling this the cube, but now that I'm looking at QBE, I'm wondering if it should just be QB. So I'm gonna start calling it QB from now on. So this is the QB that I uh, put in orbit and, and managed to recover. It was a hard hit, but it did recover um, and to finish off a contract. But what I wanna do is clean up this booster and also figure out how much it can lift. So one thing, now that part count isn't an issue anymore, is I'm going to put some parachutes on here. Oh, they're in pairs, of course. Whoops. Let's see here. There we go. And uh, what I want, I noticed when you see if we can get these so they don't deploy right away. So we're going to up. Yeah, let's up those all the way there. And same with this one. And, you know, I'm even going to be able to afford a radial mounted chute on this booster so that we can recover, I suppose, just for weight, let's do one on each side. That is looking all right. Oh, the other last thing I want to do is... There's always that fouling up, or not, a, the potential to have foul ups. When that decoupler goes, and I'm thinking just the inclusion, that little strut, and I'll even slide this up just a little bit to make it look a little better. Just to give a bit of a gap between the fairing and the decoupler that should help with the that fairing here not fouling up so I'm gonna put the clamshell back on and I don't want the ejection force that's why it was disappearing I like <laughs> you might recall last day the, the pieces were just disappearing I think I just there I like this to be not too high and their means I, I just like it the look of them just peeling off really slowly okay so there we go that is, I think, a better booster. Um, now what I'm interested in is, if I put on a, this should do her, a tank, and as I'm decreasing that, I'm gonna look at the, the, the Delta V here. I'm gonna go with about 3,600 being what it takes to go get into, um, into low orbit. I've been finding with these small rockets, usually 3600 is plenty to get into low Kerbin orbit, but I've been finding with these rockets, um, I'm just barely getting into low orbit with 3600 meters per second of delta V. I, I think the reason is, is because, um, at least I assume the reason is, is because these are light rockets. Like I'm only talking here, how much does this whole thing weigh? This whole thing has a mass of just over 10 tons. Um, which is still, what's the, I'm up to 18 tons, so I'm still well below the launch pad mass. Um, and I'm thinking just because it's lighter, it's having a tougher time pushing its way through the atmosphere. I'm wondering if heavier rockets just need less delta V from a purely vacuum perspective um, than lighter rockets, just because the heavier rockets get through the atmosphere. Okay. Anyway, what we're gonna do now, let's figure out what the mass of this payload is. Open up sub-assemblies, drop this booster while holding the alt key, 
into the sub-assembly. And this is going to be the striker. Uh, 1-R4 dash Cogswell uh, booster and payload is 315 kilograms to LKO and we will save that and so now I got a variety of these boosters um, so depending on my payload mass I just have to slap on a booster and uh, you know uh, I don't have to reconstruct this every single time however I'm only up to 315 kilograms that still isn't really a lot of mass I mean really if we get to like some uh, like this 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 thing here is over a ton just on itself so if I want to start getting Kerbals into space I certainly need more than that so what I think I shall do is start off new and I just want to build the biggest booster that I can. Especially I'd love to build something that can lift something with a 1.25 meter um, diameter. And while you watch me getting started with the construction of this booster, I do have an announcement to make. I have started a Patreon account. It's something I have been not getting into really. Like I've only just recently started monetizing videos. Um, but I do want to make this into something that I can justify putting more time into than I am. Putting more time into making these videos. I also want to get back into making math videos and tutorial videos. Perhaps getting into other games as well, doing Let's Plays with those. So, there will there is a link in the description as well. There will be a link during the credits at the end. Obviously a completely optional thing, but if you feel like you would like to drop in a couple of bucks It would be certainly more than appreciative and uh, It will help me justify trying to put more time into these things and hopefully improving both the quality and the quantity of the videos that you are seeing in the meantime, uh, yeah, I did run into some issues with this. Uh, it didn't go quite as well as I was hoping it would. The big thing is I need more powerful engines. I really don't have engines that are all that powerful, not much more powerful than what you have already seen. I also ran into a bit of a problem unlocking some of the parts, specifically the FL-T200 fuel tank, which is right now the largest LFO can that I have unlocked. It was kind of weird. I went to, I paid the money to unlock it and it didn't unlock. I went into research and development and noticed that instead of unlocking, what it did is it spawned another part in that node. So I ended up with multiple copies of this uh, particular fuel can. All the rest of them seem to be fine. This one is uh, for some reason just not unlocking for me. And every time I pay to unlock it, it simply spawns another one that and none of them do I have access to in the vehicle assembly building um, I'm trying to figure out why this is happening I suspect it's the uncurbled tech tree because the uncurbled tech tree did move this part from one node into another node and I'm trying to figure out exactly what went wrong it's not really a big deal because I do have the T100 LFO tanks which are exactly half the size and exactly half the mass with exactly half the fuel and oxidizer in them so when you stack them up they amount to the exact same thing there's no real deficiencies that are happening just in really more the way it looks so I ended up with a stack of these FL-T100 tanks instead of the 200 tanks and as far as thrust goes I, I found out my best option was just a cluster of four Cogswell engines down here at the bottom the, they have a pretty good thrust to mass ratio they're not the most powerful thing in the world but you know you bang them bang them all together like this and they seem to work okay uh, I do have the thud radial engine which is more powerful than this but it has a uh, lower thrust to mass ratio and also all that mass in what's going to be the upper stage isn't that good because I'm really limited with the boosters that I have, my most powerful booster is still that striker, that 0.625 meter tall striker booster that you've been seeing so much of in my rockets. I think it's pretty much in every rocket that you've seen pretty close. 
Um, I played around with trying to cluster them together into making kind of mega boosters out of them. That didn't work. It just really didn't significantly increase the Delta V available to the rocket. But I kept playing around with this and, oh, spent way too much money on simulations. And, oh my goodness, I spent way too much time building this booster, the better part of a morning fighting with it, despite having over 3950 meters per second of delta V, this thing just barely gets into low carbon orbit. Um, couple of issues. <laughs> I think I think the main issue is, is that my central booster, although it has a lot of delta V in it, like 2745 meters per second of delta V is in this central core booster with its quartet of Cogswell engines down here at the bottom. Um, these SRBs just don't do enough of the heavy lifting in the lower part of the atmosphere. And so this thing's doing so much work. One, we're not even that high into the atmosphere yet and this thing's already working hard. Um, and it's not designed for that. I really need to get big, bigger boosters, bigger SRBs, I think. I tried going to some liquid fuel uh, boosters again I just don't have the engines for it so uh, better engines better boosters I think has got to be my next thing if I want to get better at the, and, and the unfortunate if I take this off just to sort of show um, come on you here's what I go like this thing only has about 400 kilograms that I'm lifting into uh, low carbon orbit so if I open up my sub-assemblies here, um, you know, 180, 100, it's, barely, it's just barely better than the Striker 1-R, you know, the Striker 1 with the four radial boosters and the Cogswell on the top, it's barely better than that. But you know what, one thing it can do, here, I'll throw this in here, come on you, you're coming with me, aren't you? There we go. <laughs> one thing it does do, is it does, uh, it can lift 2.5 meter payloads fairly easily. So if I have 2.5 meter payloads that aren't particularly heavy, I guess I can use this. It also can go suborbital. I bet you I can throw um, a capsule in here and get Kerbals at least suborbital. So I'll find some uses for it, but uh, I, yeah, needless to say, I was a little bit disappointed. Let's see, what are we gonna call this thing? We're gonna call this thing the Cogswell. I can spell Cogswell. Four dash S6 for the six radial um, strikers that are on the side. Oh, I think that works. And uh, this thing has payload uh, of 400 kilograms to LKO. Kind of disappointing. Did learn a couple of things though with it. One of which was, during all the simulations and trying to squeeze the most out of this rocket that I possibly could, I ended up revisiting my KOS Ascent script. You might recall from a number of episodes ago, I spent probably too much time talking about my formula for calculating pitch and the theoretical, I don't know, I'll, if you, I'll put some air quotes around that word, theoretical, my, my flimsy theoretical underpinnings uh, to said formula. Uh, and how, where it came from, and how my old formula was just something I pretty much pulled out of my back end and fiddled around with and said, yeah, that looks right. Well, guess what? That one works better. <laughs> that one is more efficient than the one I spent all that time talking about a few episodes ago. So I went back to my Ascent script, have it, it's a little bit more efficient than it was before. You also may be wondering, why six radial SRBs on that thing rather than eight? Uh, there's obviously room for eight around there. Well, when I put on another pair of radial strikers, that put it over the mass limit for the launch pad. So there's another thing I gotta be thinking about is upgrading the launch pad. And actually, while I'm here in post <laughs> gameplay voiceover mode, I'm starting to look at this thing during editing and thinking, you know what, I think I might be able to make this a little bit better. <laughs> if I decrease that upper stage's mass, I think that's really quite what's the real problem. Make a smaller upper stage, 
and really oomph up the lower stages, but that has to be something for the future. You are going to be seeing this booster again, uh, because right after this, I did get into designing a mission for it, and I built the Octo-1. I now have the Octo Probe Core with its built-in SAS, but not only SAS, built-in reaction wheels. Oh, uh, that is going to be exciting, better control. And I configured it to do the mite experiment that comes from Kerbalism. This is a biome-specific experiment that will, uh, for low, uh, actually low orbit and higher orbits as well, but we'll be going for a low orbit. Uh, but it has to be in an orbit that is inclined at at least 70 degrees, and it turned out that that Cogswell 4 booster was, despite being just marginally better, that was just good enough, <laughs> just enough better to get it into a low orbit. So you're going to be seeing it later, and we'll be talking about that later. But right now, well, I got something else I need to design. Here, we'll start with this but I do have rover wheels now I believe yes like legitimately I do have these rover wheels and I think what I need to do is build me a little science buggy uh, we'll take all the fuel out we did that so close that off so I don't have to worry about it being and I want to get these little wheels on here. Now these are really, really small. So I'm not sure if these will work. This will be just kind of a proof of concept. I mean, I have, I have in the past put a jet engine on the backs of these things and driven around with the jet engine, but I kind of am in the mood to actually buy a car, build a car. And then what this is going to need, because these things take a lot of electric charge, one per second. Uh, these solar cells generate 0.3 a second. So I need to generate four a second. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but they only do it while they dry. Actually, if I make... I'll probably need them all. Yeah, okay. Let's not get cute. Um... Yeah, a lot of solar cells. What about these ones? They generate 0.2 a second. Let's, can I get these big guys? How big is this? Oh, this isn't so ridiculous. Okay, let, we'll, we'll hesitate from putting on the science for now. I just want to see. Will this thing drive? That is really all I care about. Can I drive this? Got to get some clearance. Sure, let's see how this works. And this is purely, will this work? And if it works, we're gonna stick a bunch of science on it. And we're gonna go around and obviously collect science. And specifically, actually, this thing, what I really wanna do is tool around the KSC and hit all those little mini biomes by each of the buildings. We're not gonna go far. Well, wait, this seems to work. It's dorky looking. There's no question about that. It drives and doesn't drain, so it's charging enough. Let's see as it does with this little lip. Whoa. And how it does at the bottom here. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Um, this is kind of a proof of con. I think this is going to work for me. So we'll stick a bunch of science on this. Maybe try and pretty it up a little bit. We'll see it a little later, I suppose. Uh, I don't know how long this is going to take to build. I want to see if it goes up a hill. Okay. That's really the main thing. Put the lights on? Mm. What's the view like from in here? Okay, okay. We are coming to this lip. And I really want to see, will it get up the lip? That is the main thing here. Top speed of about... 10 meters per second. Oh boy, I'm going pretty. Ah, hit that kind of hard. Gotta be a little more gentle. But once I was, this thing just worked fine. So we kitted it out with all the science that I thought might be useful and pushed it into the 
building queue of the space plane hangar. We'll be seeing it towards the end of this episode. In the meantime, ugly test vehicle two days away. I guess that is what is going to be next. You can see it's the uh, Striker and then the R3 with the console on the top. It's just that particular booster with a pile of crap on the, on the top of it. <laughs> so let's open up our contracts here. We are looking at hauling the small landing gear up to, oh, just suborbital trajectory, nothing, no particular altitude, but I do need to test the structural pylon once I'm over 220 kilometers in a suborbital trajectory. And we're gonna run ballistic and it takes a heading Let's head off to C, so that's going to be at 90 degrees, and it takes a pitch. Let's try, oh, I know I tested this. You know what, let's go as far up as we can. Yeah. Uh, you know, here we go. Hopefully this will work. <laughs> I took, it's been a little while since the... I know it's just a week for you between these videos each time, but I tend to do them in big batches and then um, take some time off. And I've had some time off. Why is it rolling? Program ended. I don't know why that happened. Okay, uh, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> don't know why that happened. Okay, just, let's just go straight up. Uh, I don't know what happened with that ballistic script. I wasn't paying attention. I was talking about the fact that it's been a little while since I last place, played KSP. And I know I tested this thing, but I really don't remember exactly what I did. Wow, I wonder why that happened with... I wasn't looking at the messages on that ballistic script or anything. Oh, that's right. All that thing does is once it hits the pitch it wants to do, it just ends the program, does it not? I can't remember. Okay. Oh, I don't have my... God dang it. Okay, wait, I can still do some of this. Let's just see this. If I can just get suborbital. Well, I've lost my structural pylon, so clearly that's a fail. Oh my gosh. If I can get this suborbital, I can I at least hold the landing gear there. Oh my golly, there we go. Our Apple Waps, this is 85, that's enough. Oh, so what happened there? What happened there? I'm so used to SRBs, I didn't throttle up so when I staged the Cogswell didn't go because I didn't have the throttle up <laughs> and uh, then I said oh I guess it didn't stage so I hit stage again which staged off the uh, structural pylons which completely now botched that um, McBob <laughs> bought that or messed up that contract and uh, Okay, we're about to go suborbital, which is should be this one once we're in space. But of course, once I've lost, there we go. Well, one out of two. Oh my gosh. Like I was saying, it's been a while since I last played. I remember testing this. I probably made the same mistake. Feel It feels actually rather familiar. <laughs> <sighs> well, we'll put this back into the building queue again, I suppose. I guess I could take the uh, wheels off. Well, it frees up another contract. Maybe there's another suborbital contract that I can attach to this thing. Any suborbital part testing I could do. Test the torch. Suborbital. Why don't I do this? Because I will be going suborbital at some point anyway. And that way I can just use the same rocket. And we'll take off what we don't need anymore. And we'll find that torch rocket doesn't much matter where it goes. I put you here. Ok, 
kind of a goofy thing. Why not? And that has more Delta V than it did before, so it should be golden. I think I'm just going to fly just like this. No, oh, that's actually going to get built before the Octo is built, so we'll get to see that next anyway. Okay, don't think I will use the ballistic strip. I will remember to throttle up this time. Where is the sun? Is it setting? It's setting behind us. Look at that beautiful sunset. Let's just go. go contracts, contracts, contracts. So use Billy torch. So torch and silly. Where is the other one? Structural pylon, and it's the structural pylon that does have to be tested. The torch simply has to get hauled up there. Tweet a little bit this way. That's good. Okay. Um, my throttles on. Oh, the. Did I not? Oh my god! My life is getting harder and harder every day, so I don't know if anybody picked up what I did. But I took off the structural pylons and left on the landing gear, which was the successful contract. <sighs> oh my gosh. Oh god, okay, okay, okay. Well, again, it'll be one out of two, won't it? Ah! The torch is flying! Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Are we, are we going to go somewhere? We've got to get to 140 kilometers. That isn't going to happen, is it? No, 92. What fracking joy. <laughs> oh, well, okay. Well, that was a waste of time. Oh, no, now we got... Yeah. Yeah, that's not going to be able to go suborbital. Take these off. This can go suborbital without a problem. Yeah. Ay ay ay! What a rockhead! All right, Octo One. Oh, beautiful sunrise! This is actually going to work out really well. Nice sunrise launch for going into what's going to be close to a polar orbit because it, as we're going to go, no, uh, I'm going to go northwards. You can go northwards or southwards. But what's going to happen is uh, you're going to largely follow the Terminator uh, between the night and the uh, day and the night side of Kerbin. And that means it'll spend most of its time uh, in the sunlight for a while. So that, that'll be good. And I need to get into an inclination of at least 70 degrees. We're going to aim for 75. This thing can barely make it. I, if I went for a polar orbit, like a 90 degree inclination, I'm not going to make it. That's how close this is going to be. Now, I did get into orbit upon simulation. But now it's going to be for real with no reverse. Off we go. And actually, while this is going, we can talk about this rather stumpy, ugly, inefficient booster. I guess the one main feature is, is it's the first booster that features reaction wheels. I now have unlocked these small reaction wheels and actually even really tiny half-sized reaction wheels as well. But this is the more traditional small reaction wheels, and I got two of them. One of them is tucked in amongst all of the this quartet of Cogswell engines that I have down here at the bottom. It's a little cluster. Well, you can see it. There is a... Oh, there are those. those. <laughs> there is a uh, reaction wheels in there, and then there's another one just under the fairing at the top. 
And then that way, between the two of them, they give this thing fairly good attitude control. You want to get um, reaction wheels close as you can towards the center of mass. I find with the small reaction wheels, if I put them in there and then use the translation tools to try and hide them in the middle, uh, I find that they start to get counted into the drag calculation and it really messes up the whole rocket. So that's why there's two of them. I found that actually made the rocket ascend better. Two of them, one on each end of the booster. All right, we're now on that quartet of cogs. Well, no spider engines, so it's just the reaction wheels that are with attitude control right now. So in fact, this cool. And of course, there are reaction wheels in the pro body, and the Octo Pro Core has some built-in reaction wheels as well. All right, what is our apoapsis getting to? You know, I should have put an engineer chip on this. Oh no, I would have been ri no. I need the better lifter. Um, the engineer chip would have added just a smidge more mass. I don't know what it is. All right, 50 kilometers on our apoapsis. So the mite now. It's just said notice it no longer is giving me the warning about an inclination of more than 70 degrees. So we are in an inclination now of more than 70 degrees. We are in an invalid situation because we need to be uh, in an orbit. All right, so at 50 kilometers, we are going to end the program. There we go, attitude lock disengaged. Let's keep a track of my electricity. Plenty of electricity. Close this, let's put on SAS. And pretty soon we'll lose these fairings. That will give us a bit more delta V. All right, we're in 60 claws. Do that. Oh, come on, don't be. Ugh, still doesn't come off very nicely. All right, now you can see my other reaction wheel there. Okay, we need to put this puppy into orbit. We have 900 meters per second approximately. Should be doable. Oh my gosh, just, just made it. Actually, I suppose, what happened? Just out of curiosity, I'm going to get a bit of a kick from the stage separation here. Let's stage our little uh, probe here. That kicked it up to a nice, pretty ground close to circular orbit. I like that. Okay. Let's arrange this this way. Yeah. And where is Mr. Sun? Got some nice, get some nice rays from the sun. Extend this antenna. All right, and that's going to be in orbit. It's going to be collecting data over a variety of biomes. Let's uh, actually take a look at what's the one. This is the one there. We already got some mite. There we go. Some mite uh, collected over uh, space low over the highlands. We've got some grasslands. We've got some mountains. And it's going to transmit this and as it goes along because of our orbit we're not quite in a polar orbit i'm kind of curious i'm going to time warp here will we be catching some of those ice caps or am i not inclined enough so we get some ice caps that would be beautiful oh we're getting some low water now but will we be catching some ice caps I don't know. Probably not going to get every biome, but it'll be getting a lot of them. No. No, I don't know if I'm going to get ice caps. What about on the other side? Well, you know, as Kerbin rotates, maybe we'll catch some ice caps. See what happens down here.
See what I mean? How we're staying nicely in the sun because not quite a polar orbit, but perhaps close enough. I'm going to spend a lot of time in the sun. I can see the moon moving into an eclipting position. That's just beautiful. <laughs> of course it's going to. Uh, and I don't think we're going to get caps down here either. So I guess we won't be getting the caps in the shelves. Northern and... But should be getting pretty much every other biome. Why is it not transmitting right now? You know what we should do? Okay. Oh, it is transmitting. It's just not a very good signal. Okay. What we should do, I just realized that. This would be a good opportunity to look at the automation. So this is the Octo 1. And what we're interested in is in the auto command and the antenna. Here we go. Call when electric charge goes below 20%. So this is getting into the automation. Call when the electric charge is above 80%. Call when the sunlight becomes available. Call when in the shadow. So what I'm going to do is we're going to simply when we're in the shadow we're going to make sure the antenna turns off and when we're in the sunlight we're going to make sure the antenna turns on and that will take care of hopefully the electric any electrical issues we run into yeah, i would love to have put more solar panels on here but that wasn't in the cards there we go um and this will keep going even outside of uh it's transmitting again it must have been maybe we were in some sort of communication dark plot spot but anyway uh it will keep transmitting even when the vessel is not loaded so it'll keep collecting science it'll keep working for me i don't have to stay here with it and this science will just keep getting collected in the background so i am free to go back to the space center and leave that to its own devices and it apparently will keep track of when it's in the sunlight and when it's not in the sunlight and pay attention to that automated script. So, um, you know, and keep track of battery, electrical resources and all that kind of stuff too. What's coming up? I want to get to seeing that little space, but our little, little car. Try out that little car. Uh, science buggy's coming up next. I think that's what we'll, yeah, we'll finish off the episode on our little science buggy. Alright, bomb. Uh, let's drive, so. We are still on the runway right now, but as soon as we're off the runway, we should start collecting stuff. I think here we're going to be just in what's called the KSC. Be very gentle because these wheels are not. Okay, let's go, Bob. Hmm. Can't still be the runway. Maybe I've gotten the KSC. All right, well, our first stop is going to be the administrative building. Please don't tell me all that stuff is gone. I'm pretty sure the goo. Yeah, I don't think the goo is going to do anything for me. We'll queue it up anyway. But I'm a little bit concerned that nothing else here is working. Break, break. I don't want to break anything. Okay, well, get up. Up. 
up, 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 up. Okay, let's enter and get close to the administrative building. I am very concerned. I thought I'd be collecting science here. Oh, dearie, dearie, dear. Don't tell me this easy science is no longer around for us. Um, it still says landed on shores. So do I not have... Let's take the brakes off. I'm forcing this to run just so I can see the biome, but don't tell me I don't have Kerbalism. I think Kerbalism has removed removed all of these nice <laughs> little biomes of collecting science at like things like at all the little buildings and stuff. This is all just landed at shores. I think the KSC biomes have been removed. It. Oh no, my science buggy is largely useless. Well, no, I guess I can go to the grasslands. So the KSC has been removed as a biome. Kerbalism, you are so cruel. You're removing my ability to game the system with silly science. Besides the fact, it's not like this vehicle is particularly speedy. <laughs> Seems to be doing all right at three times speed. Oh, it's drifting. Let's uh, slow down and point it due west again. All right, four times. And then, of course, crap like that happens. Well, you know. <laughs> Oh dear. Bob, can you let's can Bob do an EVA? Tell me Bob can at least do something. Can you do an EVA report? I don't think so. No, you can't even do an EVA report. Yeah, with that monumental bit of sadness to end this episode on, I think we're going to have to uh call this episode complete <laughs> so until next time i thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time